like I've got some things to do. Spyro the Dragon is a video game that has touched the hearts of many when it first came out in 1998. It's about a tiny purple dragon who goes on big adventures to save the worlds around him. And with big adventures come pretty big powerful bad guys, from easily offended ugly norts, to megalomaniacal magic dinosaurs. Capture the eggs, your highness. Every last one. Excellent. Maybe you will amount to something after all. But no matter the foe or their size, Fire was able to take them down with ease. And of course, that's the purpose of today's video. Today, I'll be ranking all the Spyro bosses, at least those in the original, or should I say, Reignited trilogy, from worst to best. Hmm, I like that idea. Of course. So with that said out of the way, let's get right into it, shall we? Bring him on. I think I smell a barbecue. Number twenty-three, Pluto the Rhinoc. You know, back in the day, this guy was actually more of a challenge. He was very intimidating and a lot more aggressive than he is in this game. Though this game seems to have watered him down quite a bit. He takes forever to do something and when he does actually attack it's easy to dodge. You can easily obliterate him in the century long windows you have. If you've gained enough ammo to do so of course. Number 22, the Colossus Yeti. I'm quite surprised we never got to fight this guy in Ripto's Rage. Throughout the level of Colossus in that game, we were set up like we were actually going to have a... The devs psyched us out to all where we had to do in that level was reach the end. Fortunately, they made it up to us in this game, and you get to take him on Yeto e Yeto. Back in the day, this game, this mini game right here was actually a lot of fun for me. But as an overall boss fight, it's actually kind of boring. All you have to do is press whichever button is to hit him that corresponds to the area that he's not guarding. And most of the time all he does is block. Plus if you ask me, the animation was much better in the original version. It's a shame you could only fight him a number of a certain amount of times before having to go out of the level and then coming back to reset it all. Because this is because like I said, this is actually one of my favorite mini games. Number 21, Blowhard. You know, if this guy actually put up more of a fight and didn't run away as much and didn't go far away waiting for you to come and flame him, I might actually have him up a bit higher on this list. But instead he makes you deal with the whims of his own level than himself. At least Nasty Nork put up more of a fight against you. But overall they are pretty much the same. And from here on out I'll let the rest of this play out for you to watch. Numbers 20 through 17, the Sparks World bosses. These are the ones you'll encounter by doing every single one of the Sparks mini games hidden in each hub world. They're not really all too entertaining because they all share the same 3D shooter perspective mechanics, but they are all very interesting. I put them in order here from what from what I believe to be worst to best, but they're all pretty much the same depending on how much you have or what you do, despite not one being related to any other. The Crawdag King is just point and shoot. The Manta Ray is more free roam and splits into smaller ones. The Robo P is just about the same but is armored in certain areas. And the Spider spins and summons. But to be honest, I think the Spider has a more balanced mechanic in it than the others do. It has a balanced switch between offense and defense and can actually put up a decent fight by summoning smaller spiders in large waves against you, making crowd control play an important role in its fight. But it does so in a way that's not unfair. Just try and stay out of its way when it's in the, its deflective spin mode. And keep a fair amount of distance between you and its little babies, and you'll be fine. Sixteen, the Metropolis Ox. This one's pretty straightforward if you remember the Colossus hockey game. All you do is flame the bombs that the ox throws at you back at him. Though it can get pretty heated once he starts throwing out more and more bombs, and the ice skating mechanics aren't very easy to deal with that. So just keep your distance and stay out of their way until you can find a clear opening, and you'll be fine. Number 15, 
Nasty Nork. Nasty Nork was actually Spyro's very first arch nemesis. It's a shame he's just a real pussy in that regard. All he ever does is just run away from you while you try to chase him down. The only time he ever really puts any actual effort into this fight is when he's up top his pedestal all safe and sound while you try and chase down his thieves to unlock it and bring it down to go after him. From there he occasionally shoots at you as long as you're in range or within his line of sight. So in the first stage you have to chase down two thieves who each hold a key. When you finally get the one for his pedestal you can use it to unlock it and have your supposed final showdown with him. From here you chase him on this huge ginormous race track. If you're a completionist and you're going for 100%, then you probably won't get him on the first round because you'll have to pick up every bit of treasure there is on this track. When you reach the top of it all, he'll stop for you to have a chance to try and nail him. In the original game, it would never really last long. It would feel like an eternity trying to finally get him to move on to the next and final stage because the window to attack him was almost absolutely non-existent. If you're actually able to hit him, then he'll take the fight inside. From here, you'll have to chase him across some lava to the very end of the hall where he'll have nowhere else left to run and you can flame him one last time to bring him down, fulfilling Spyro's very first quest. But even with Nasty defeated, there's still much more to do after this. And if you actually do all that, there's a special little secret treasure world where you can go to to actually get the true ending of this game. Nork. <laughs> Number 14, Dr. Shem. If this guy put more effort into actually trying to kill you rather than looking cool, then he'd be a much better boss than he is now. His attacks in every single one of his stages are predictable and easy to manage for the most part. And even with his quicker animation speed, he still takes four frickin' ever to try and hit you. The only time he ever has a real chance in beating you is in his, in his third and final stage. But even then he's still no match for you. 13. Metalhead Not too much better than Dr. Shemp, but he does have bring a few more interesting ideas to the table. He does seem to put up more of a fight, but none of his attacks are all that accurate. The only real threat from this fight are the power pylons when they turn red if you accidentally run into them during that time. Not much changes when he moves on to the next area except for more pylons and maybe one or two new attacks. You can even get a little creative with this fight by having him destroy his own pylons with his own attacks. I like the puzzle mechanic of this one, but it falls short due to how inaccurate the boss can be. Number 12, Sleepyhead. This guy puts both a good amount of effort and accuracy into trying to take you down, but still there's nothing he can do to actually scratch you. The only real danger from this fight is if you accidentally let one of his gators nick you. He switches between bombs and gators in a perfect balance, so when he does switch back to bombs be sure to just charge at him and hit him back. He's really no challenge to take down whatsoever at all. Like a few others on this list, it's pretty much just a whole waiting game. Number 11, the Fireworks Dragons. These two are probably the best mini-boss in all of Spyro 3. Though, however, there's still a lot they don't actually get right with this one. They both hardly and randomly attack you. They're quite unpredictable and hard to keep track of. And they make the fight last longer and probably a little harder by making it impossible to hit them when you've nearly destroyed their tails and they can actually regenerate their health. But hey, it's an infinite dogfight, so it's pretty fun nonetheless. It just gets old after a while. So similar to another's final stage on this list, you have infinite super flame and super fly to take these two down. 
but they're very fast moving and hard to hit as they are initially. And like I said, it gets even harder the more their bodies are destroyed. And if you lose sight of them in the later stages, it'll be hard to try and find them again because they could be anywhere in this map. They occasionally shoot fireballs at you, which are actually pretty accurate. Let me just go by saying you'll be breathing a sigh of relief once this is all over. Number 10, Jacques. This guy actually does a lot of things the others don't in Spyro 1. He's quite aggressive, he's actually a threat. The only problem with him is he moves the fight along way too quickly. In the Reignited version, he does seem to take a lot more damage. About three hits rather than just one, like in the original game. And his arena is actually pretty cool too. But he moves very fast to all the way to the very end of the fight, and it doesn't take long to keep up with him making the whole encounter seem quite rushed. Number 9, Toasty. He's not a lot different from the other Spyro bosses in Spyro 1, but he does still seem to do a lot more right. Plus his fight doesn't feel as rushed because you have to be patient with how to take him down, and it's all thanks to it's all thanks to those damn dogs of his. They're quite a real threat with their pounce attack, how they just suddenly spring up and accurately hit you. Oh, I hate those things. So after you take down his minions, you just flame him once, but you have to do so from a certain distance, otherwise he'll hit you. That's pretty much what this whole fight's about. Caution. The use of this element of caution makes this fight all the more intimidating and kind of fun. It teaches, it teaches you something you'll need to know for future reference later on in the game. It's not easy to pick the best one out of the Spyro 1 bosses, but for me, I'd say it is, without a doubt, Toasty. Number 8, the Sorceress, super bonus round encounter. Another pretty straightforward one. All you do is have a UFO dogfight with the Sorceress. It does take quite a bit of effort to take her down, you know, trying to land your shot, as well as watch out for her own. But it's nothing compared to what another has on this list. Number 7, Spike. Out of all the bosses that got injustice in this remake, Spike is the one that got it the most. In the original, he was intimidating, terrifying, challenging, and here he's just a ridiculous looking pushover. He takes forever to attack you, and none of his shots can really hit you as long as you're moving. But I want to say there's one thing they got right about him. One is his- well, actually two things. One is his music, the other is his Mazer attack in the third stage, which is a lot more accurate than it was in the original. Even if you give no effort at all, you can still beat him. And even with the environmental hazards, he's still not a challenge. Just fight him the same way you normally would in the original, and you'll be through this one in like, Five seconds. Number six, the sorceress, first encounter. There's actually one of the very few bosses in the Spyro 3 remake that was actually done some justice. So, however, I think they ease up her difficulty a little bit. Her attacks have a much longer windup and they seem to move a lot slower and be less accurate. Though you still have to put in some effort to avoid them. Plus, I think they made it easier to damage her with the weapons Agent 9 gives you to take her on. There's not really too much I can say about this fight, but I think in her last stage when you get on the UFO her code's a bit broken because all she does is smash the ground over and over again until you hit her. Or fall off the UFO. 
the most dangers she poses to you are in her first couple of stages with the tanks and the cannons. Because she can use spells to attack you, and not smash the ground. And while she does have some flaws still, it did actually fix a couple of things up from her original version. One of which how you encounter her. Sadly no intro dialogue cutscene though. Number 5, Buzz. I've gotta say, I really hate how they redesigned most of these bosses in Spyro 3 for the remake. A lot of them were just downright scary and cool, which is what made them memorable in their original versions. But here, Buzz looks like something that straight up how to train your dragon. So I can say they probably made him a little bit more of a challenge in this version. In the later stages, his firewall is a lot more impenetrable, making you wait for him to open up so you can charge into him and knock him into the lava. The window to hop over and attack him is much smaller, if not non-existent. And I think they made the saw attack a little bit more unpredictable as well. Plus his fire sneeze seems to have a much larger hitbox, making it tougher to jump over and avoid damage while attacking him. But he still has really great music and his environment's still pretty cool. But he looks and sounds just completely awful. Number 4, Crush. Out of all the games in the Reignited Trilogy, I think Spiral 1 and 2 are the ones that got better treatment. And with that, the quality of the final four should be top notch. So let's talk about Crush here for a second, shall we? It has a pretty balanced system of offense and defense where he, util where he utilizes them both at once. When he steps on one of the glowing platforms, he's surrounded by a force field. Whatever the color of the platform is, you'll either get fireballs or electric waves. When he's not standing on one of them, you're supposed to flame him and run away, so that way when he smacks the ground when he's trying to smash you, the roof falls on him instead. He changes up his patterns a little bit when he gets around half health. He'll even get to a point where he gets tired of sitting in one place and starts to try and chase you around. But he like takes forever to try and catch up to you and attack, making the last seconds of this fight last more than they should. Number 3, Scorch. Out of all the reignited Spyro 3 bosses, this one right here is now the best. His redesign's not god awful to look at. And he provides an actual challenge for once. So most of the time this guy's surrounded by, by a force field. You're supposed to use the rocket ammunition Bentley tosses to you when he's open. But he seems to be protected more often in this version. He has two methods of attack, summoning enemies and shooting fireballs at you. The real challenge of this fight seems to come from the enemies themselves. They can be dealt with pretty easily if you have the right ammunition. And are a good distance from them. But a good majority of them, like the crabs, are fast moving and can home in on you quickly. As the fight progresses, he starts summoning different types of enemies, like the TNT weasels from Icy Peak. He even brings in Buzz towards the end of the fight as well. And he has this little flame guy who chases after you in the middle stages of it all. You'll have to manage crowd control all while trying to take down the boss. But the fight itself makes it hard to manage one while managing the other as well making it very well balanced and providing a fair challenge. You can try to hit him while he's moving, but the rockets aren't very accurate when he is.
Number two, Gulp. To this day, I have no idea how I actually beat this guy on the first try. He is everything Spike was in the original games. Just about every single one of his attacks are so accurate, they always nail me. I had to hide on the edge of the arena just to get a breather before I actually died. And fortunately, I, I got lucky enough not to. His regular attacks like his pounce and his energy mortars are definitely the hardest ones to avoid in this game. You take him down with the items you get from the skill of supply drop Alora gives you, which can either be rockets, barrels, or bombs. But it's worth noting that he can also use these items as well. If he swallows a rocket, he'll shoot it at you. If he swallows a barrel, I think it's like a AoE bullet hill attack. The bombs, I have no idea, but I think it was actually like a little flame that chases you, or is, or is that the mechanical version? I don't know. And if he eats some of your fodder, he'll gain some health back. Let me go by saying that Ripto wasn't kidding when he said, You may have been able to defeat that simpleton, but golf will be more than a match for you! So, yeah. But even though he's tough, he's still one hell of a thrill ride. Probably because he feels like an actual boss fight on scale with other different kinds of video game bosses from other different kinds of games. He requires every bit of effort you have to take him down. And then some. And the fight itself gets even harder as it progresses. And he does not tone it down one bit even if he regains health. Making him one of the, if not the toughest challenge in any Spyro game. Or any other kind of game at, for that matter. But like I said, that just makes him all the more fun to go up against. And he is definitely one that was remade to perfection. In fact, the whole game he's in is probably the one that's been remade to perfection. But even so, I still wish I got the chance to play the original when I came across it, or discovered it, like, ten years ago. It's a shame I missed out on its original release. It's probably the best out of the original Spyro trilogy and the best Spyro game overall for me. Okay, I'm kind of rambling now, so I'm just going to let the rest of this play out, and then we'll move on to the last and number one entry of this whole list. And number one, without a doubt, is Ripto. Say hello to your new king. Ripto is a crazy little midget from another world who goes around bullying the denizens of Avalar after he discovers their world due to the professor's super portal experiment. Being as powerful as he is along with his lackey's crushing gulp, he seems almost unstoppable. But little did he know that he not intentionally gave his one weakness away to his enemies. Dragons. So the denizens of Avalar summoned Spyro to help him out. And from there, Ripto was in for quite a world of hurt, finding him in more karmic situations than he normally is, as it should be. And every single one of them are really, really hilarious. Spyro chases him across the worlds of Avalar, taking Ripto and his lackeys down one at a time, and of course, restoring peace to the worlds that they have never known before. And when Spyro finally corners him, it's a battle for the ages. The first stage of this epic showdown is a power struggle between Spyro and Ripto as they fight over orbs that will give them incredible powers. You have to get three orbs in order to get a power up to damage Ripto, and whatever color the last one is that you get, that's the kind of power you'll have. Blue is Supercharge, Red is Super Flame, and Green is Super Spit. The same mechanic works with Ripto, only he has different kinds of powers. And even without the orbs, he can use his scepter to damage you. You can flame him to stall him and get an advantage, but it won't do any damage to him. When you die him in the first stage, he'll move on to the second by summoning a Mecha Gulp. The mechanics are still the same, though you can't really flame the Mecha Gulp to stall him, so you'll have to be fast if you want to get the orbs and the upper hand. While he's riding on Mecha Gulp, his Scepter Blasts seem a bit more accurate, and Mecha Gulp has abilities of its own if it eats all three orbs. When you destroy the Mecha Gulp, you'll move on to the final stage, which is a dogfight to the death in the skies. Ripto will summon a Robo Pterodactyl and destroy the arena you're standing on, so you have to absorb the orb and take the skies with Super Flame and Super Fly. This stage is probably both the best and the toughest, with you and Ripto fighting it out over a massive pit of lava. But you have to be very cautious here, because if he hits you enough times, there's no getting, there's no recovering from it because there's no fodder, and you're pretty much stuck with whatever health you have from the previous two stages. 
So keep an eye on him and do your best to avoid his scepter blast when you can. I think he has two different patterns in this stage as well. Like when he has when he's at full health, he'll just fly around and stop for you to try and hit him. And as his health decreases, he'll get more and more desperate and start flying around the edges higher and higher away from you. But that just makes it all the more better. And when you finally do down him, not only is Avalar saved, you've beaten the best boss of the best Spyro game with the best ending, of course. In my opinion, at least. And if you've done everything, you get to have a nice little vacation in Dragon Shores after this. Plus, it's just ever so satisfying seeing what that little shrimp get what's coming to him. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Do you agree with my list? Who's number one in your book in terms of Spyro bosses? Well, I hope you all enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one. Peace! Every good battle, you need a good adversary. And I felt that Nasty, in spite of his misguided nature, was a worthy opponent.